Hi everyone, my name is Chabelli. I'm a board certified AA, and this is what a day in my life is like. Every day I aim to be up at least two hours before my case starts, so that's usually from 5 to 6 a.m., and it's one of the quietest times in my day. The quietness helps get me mentally ready for the day. Working in anesthesia and surgery is a fast-paced environment, and my adrenaline gets going, so I make sure to drink my coffee and eat every morning before leaving. My job is great about breaks, but in case I don't get one until very late, I make sure I have the energy for the day. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chabelli. I'm a CAA, and I wanted to show a day in my life. I'm currently orienting for this very special team in my hospital, so I won't necessarily be showing as many details regarding what I'm doing today specifically. I will be showing a general overview of why it's so interesting and so special. I'm really excited to join this team and I think it's great to always challenge yourself. That's kind of what I wanted in a job and that's why I'm really excited. Now I want to do a good job and impress people and continue to learn and think so I want to do a good job today. But I will be explaining what a day to day might look like for me. A lot of breaks, my own kind of cases, certain kind of drugs that I might be choosing. So if you're interested in any of that, keep on watching and like, comment and subscribe. Otherwise, have a great day. The case I'm in today is really exciting and requires special equipment, but before I do that, I do my basic machine, airway, and drug setup. A quick way to remember the essentials is Miss Mates. This case is particularly different because there will only be one lung getting oxygen and ventilated while the surgical team works on the second lung. The airway is designed to be able to ventilate one lung while the other lung is deflated and operated on. In the room, I have two more additional pieces of equipment. I have a glide scope as a backup in case it's difficult to place the breathing tube. The glide scope has a small camera attached at the end to be able to see the vocal cords and verify correct placement of the breathing tube. To verify that this particular breathing tube is in the correct place and isolating one lung, there's a small camera that is placed into the breathing tube before the procedure starts. This is a bronchoscope. The verification is important because it allows for the surgical team to work on one lung that is deflated while the other lung remains inflated, oxygenated, and ventilated. The drugs will also be slightly different to accommodate for the needs of the patient and surgery. But just like with many other cases, the patient receives pain medicine, medicine to go to sleep, paralytic, and medication that will support the blood pressure and heart rate during the procedure. This case also has an additional monitor as a safety measure, which is called an arterial line. An arterial line will show every blood pressure beat by beat. This helps to see if there's any significant changes in the patient quickly by showing changes in the blood pressure. To place an arterial line, it can be done by feeling the trajectory of a patient's artery and an ultrasound. The ultrasound is an extra measure to visualize the correct placement of an arterial line. The ultrasound is able to show layers of the skin, muscle, organs, nerves, veins, arteries, and blood flow. The black circle on this screen represents the artery. It's pulsating and non-compressible. When the arterial catheter is placed, it will also show on the screen and the ultrasound will be used to verify correct placement. I enjoy many case types, but I really enjoy a case like this that incorporates a lot of different techniques and has special anesthetic considerations. Once everything in the room is set up, I meet the patient and do a pre-op interview. During the interview, I verify the patient, the procedure, and consent. I ask the patient questions about their medical history and review the anesthetic plan. I answer any remaining questions about their anesthesia. Afterwards, I grabbed breakfast. Since I was in the flip room, while I was waiting for my case to start, I gave breaks. Then I drew up the medications for the procedure, and my patient rolled back into the room. After everything was settled in, it was my job to make sure that the vital signs were within normal limits. I also made sure the charting was caught up, and then I had a lunch break about halfway through the case. After the case was over, the patient was dropped off in PACU, and I gave report to the receiving RN. I answer any questions that they have about the patient's anesthesia. After I was finished with the case, it was close to the end of my shift. 
Around this time, the caseload decreased and I worked on reviewing patient charts for the next day. And this really helps because when you get assigned to a patient, you are able to read about them before you meet them and get an idea on what stands out in terms of their anesthesia plan. some dinner my boyfriend is honestly the better chef of us two and he almost always cooks but he's been away in new york city so right now i'm gonna make dinner for the two of us and hopefully when he gets off the plane and comes home he'll have a nice cooked dinner which is not <laughs> the normal thing he usually makes it so overall it was just a great day again i really hope that this video is encouraging people to look into the field because i think it is honestly such a great field it's not as widely known and i wish that i knew about it sooner and i wish that there was just more access to this kind of information on different career paths in general that's what i'm trying to do here and i hope that this has helped you and if it has try to support the channel by subscribing and of course you know let me know anything you want to see more of otherwise i'll see you next week and have a great week everyone see ya